ESPN Report. We are live from Spartan Arena at Homestead High School for the first girls boy SAC doubleheader of the basketball season as the 7-2 Homestead Spartan girls take on the 5-5 five five Bishop Dwanger Saints. Good evening and welcome into the booth at Homestead High School. I'm Anthony Gary alongside color commentator Noah Lance and silent reporter Braxton Hall and Noah. Right before we get into this double header, I need, we need to talk about how up and down this start of the girls basketball season has been. Yeah, they won their first six games to start the season, lost two, have won two straight since then. They had two tough losses though, one against Noblesville and then a really tough buzzer beater loss against Huntington North in overtime. But since then, two really solid away wins, one at Pike, a nine point win, and then Carroll. And let's get into the OPS pregame show, starting by taking a look at the start of the season for the Spartans. And as you can see, it has been completely up and down. They started the season hot, including a huge win over the number two team in the class of 3A Norwell, before being completely flipped upside down with a tough loss to Noblesville and being upset here at home by Huntington North. Well, yeah, that was just a really tough one to get upset. Noblesville, that's, n that's a really good loss there, but you look at... SAC, they are 3-0 and right now. That is a great start to the, for their season, especially that Carroll win is going to be huge coming down later on. That makes it seem like it's going to be a Northrop versus Homestead battle for the SAC this year. And that last game for the Spartans beating Carroll as they move to 3-0 and in the SAC has most importantly took a head-to-head -head win on one of the big four in the conference. And with that, Ali Stevens had a career high in that game, 27 points, a huge game for her but also you see Maya Epps once again in double digits and then another fresh freshman Gabby Helsom had nine boards in that game and then we talked about it over and over this defense has looked pretty solid throughout the year 15 steals in that game for the Spartans. Noah the conference really is shaping up to be a race to the finish line with the finale set to come on January 27th at Northrop High School both teams are shaping up to be with the best in the state, much less the conference. 100%, and I think that's what we're going to see right here tonight. And with that, we've seen Homestead already play really well. Northrop has looked really good. Snyder, we know they've got Jordan Poole, arguably the best player in the SAC. So there's a lot that still could happen. A lot that still could happen. Of course, Homestead has to go to Snyder and go to Northrop in the latter part of their season. Those games both will be huge, but also looking at this S these SAC rankings, you see Carroll at 0-2, but don't be mistaken, they are probably the third best team in the conference. Yeah, that's a real shocker. I mean, they've played two tough matchups against the top two right now, Homestead and Northrop. That's why they're sitting at 0-2 up to this point, but they could very well get themselves back up in that top three. And now to turn our attention to the Spartans' opponent tonight here, the Bishop Dwanger Saints, so far, they haven't been quite able to get out to the start. They wanted to, going 5-5 five and five and 1-2 and two in the SAC. A really tough start for them so far. You just see they've had some pretty bad losses in the SAC. They've lost to Snyder. They lost to Northrop. Both games, they only scored 15 points in those. They did get a win against Northside, but overall, they have not looked too good this season. But this could be a huge win here tonight if they were able to get it. If they're able to pull off an upset tonight, it certainly would be a big one. So far, not really many blockbuster wins for this Bishop Dwanger team. They haven't been able to turn many heads. They're probably the most impressive win, the 50-47 to victory at East Noble. But other than that, nothing that really comes to eye. Yeah, there's not much that stands out there as of now. This team is looking a little bit different from a year ago. They do have some returning players but also some new players that they're still trying to fit in. And so far through 10 games, they haven't been able to figure it out. Now for the Homestead girls, of course, coming off that win last Friday versus Carroll, that was such a big win, not only for the school, for the whole program in general, because they came into that game as underdogs. Not many people were actually expecting the Spartans to win after being upset by Huntington North, but they got the bounce back game that they really needed to in the area. Yeah, it really was a much needed win just for the confidence of this team coming off of two losses already. Don't want to make it a third. They're up and down in that game. At one point, they were losing by double digits. one point, they were winning by double digits. But in the end, they were able to pull through and get the big victory over a rival nonetheless. And tonight, we're really going to see if that spark 
They, that lead that they had before having to, again, make a comeback to come out on top at on the road at their number one rival. We'll see if that spark that it was ignited inside of them continues over into this game, in, game and even into tomorrow where they have to travel to Ohio to play Notre Dame Academy. Yeah, that's going to be really tough just to play games back to back, especially when you're going to be traveling a long way to Ohio, Ohio tomorrow for that game. So with that, it's going to be tough. And now we're going to send it down to Siler reporter Braxton Hall, who's standing by with coach Rod Parker. Thanks, Anthony. Coach, you're currently tied atop the conference alongside Northrop. What do your Spartans need to do against Bishop Dwinger tonight to stay on top of the league? Well, we really have to work on the offensive end to be sharp, value every possession. We made a big emphasis this week on our ability uh, to sharpen up our cuts, our screens, um, our passes, to get better shots each and every time down the floor. And, and defense, we have to do a good job of working hard to make uh, Dwinger, you know, work to get quality shots. All right, thanks, Coach. You can go up tonight. Anthony, back to you. Thank you, Braxton. And Coach Parker always says the best. He always says exactly what his team needs. They have to take care of the ball on the offensive side because that's going to be so important. Dwanger, it really looks like the only chance that they're going to win this game is by getting some fluke turnovers and being able to convert. That's how Homestead blew, has blown out teams this year. Dwanger, of course, looking to flip the script. Well, Homestead does like to play fast pace, which does lead to a lot of turnovers for both teams on the season, averaging around 16 turnovers a game for the Spartans while forcing over 20 turnovers on the other side. So they're definitely going to be turnovers in this game. It's just going to be who is going to be able to capitalize off those turnovers. Homestead getting so many turnovers every single game, averaging 11.3 steals per game to their opponents, only 6.5. Of course, like you said, they like to play very fast paced. They like to pick it up and that caused a lot of turnovers on both ends but Spartans looking to come out on top of that tonight we're going to take a short break when we come back it is going to be time for the tip off of Homestead versus Bishop Dwanger what limits you too small too old insecure broken you have no limits Rethink your limits. Welcome back to Homestead High School as we are now getting set for tip-off as the starters are being announced for both squads. We're going to take a look now at our keys to the game for both teams as the starters get announced. The first key to the game for the Bishop Dwanger Saints is to play at their own pace. We said this earlier, pace is going to be so important in this ball game. They have to keep their own pace and not let Spartans take control. And then they have to control the boards. It's going to come down to six foot two. Giselle Akei, 
who has the major size advantage on the Homestead Spartans. So we'll see if she can take advantage of that. Yeah, that's definitely where Dwinger has the advantage in this one. So that's where they're going to need to attack. They also have Vanessa Cook, who is 5'11". So overall, pretty similar when it's all said and done between the height advantages for both these teams. And then for the Spartans, they got to exploit the depth. Last week, they were able to put in 9 to 10 people, and it was really good for those starters to finally get the rest that they needed. So continue to do that, especially if you're able to get out to a big league. And then on offense, just get a quick scoring and just continue to do that. And a change to the starting lineup for the Spartans to be noted is that Gabby Helsum has worked her way into the starting lineup for Homestead instead of Evie Bottoms. This is a big change for Coach Rod Parker as now she is, now the Spartans are looking to make a difference. So correction, Evie Bottoms will be starting for the Homestead Spartans. It's not Gabby Hell some time yet, but we know that Coach Parker is has definitely taken notice of the way Gabby Helsum has performed off the bench recently. Yeah, she had nine rebounds, four steals, five points in the last game against a rival just as a freshman. So definitely going to be seeing her play more and more. She's deserved it after that last game. So we will see if she ever steps into that role this year, but you definitely expect her to next year. The stars for the Spartans are Emma Royce, Maya Epps, Evie Bottoms, Molly Stock, and Allie Stevens. The same that they've been all year, but do expect Gabby Helsum and Sanaya Sandlin to get into the game at some some point, especially Sanaya Sandlin matching up very similarly to Giselle Aki. 100%. Sanaya Sandlin, one of the taller players on this team for the Spartans. The officials for tonight's matchup, Randy Miller, Sean Miller, and Chris Stunda. They're going to be calling the game making sure it's all clean and fair as now we are getting set for tip-off. It's going to be Ali Stevens for the Spartans and Giselle Ecke for the Bishop Dwanger Saints. That one goes right into the hands of Maya Epps, already attacking quickly and two points just five seconds into the game for Maya Epps. And she has not been scared ever since stepping on to the varsity stage. She attacks at every chance she gets and she can finish. Court now with the ball trying to drive inside. You can see this Homestead defense being very aggressive. Giselle Ecke finds a girl underneath. No good for Mary O'Brien in a foul called on the floor. That one is going to be on Vanessa Cook for the Bishop Dwanger Saints. Well, that was a good look there from Ecke to get it down low to O'Brien. She just wasn't able to finish, but a good offensive play right there. And then once again, the freshman, Maya Epps, boxing Allen, getting a big board, and then drawing a foul. The Homestead freshmen have been stellar at getting those rebounds so far this year, not being afraid. Stock has it on the wing. Been quiet in a couple of the recent games and turns it over back to the hands of the Saints. Well, that's something the Spartans cannot do. We talked about they like to play fast, which a lot of times leads to those turnovers. But then at other times, you just never know what's going to happen on the offensive side. They get a little stagnant sometimes, and that right there was just an errant pass by Molly Stock. Possession now for the Saints. Down by two just a minute into the game. We'll see what they can do on the set play. If they find it in to Eki, who can't get the layup to fall. Stock fighting for the rebound and can't grab it. It's Vanessa Cook that ends up with it. Ball working around. Stevens gets the steal as Court was trying to find Eki. Puts up a floater shot. No good. Gets her own rebound. Drives inside. Throws that one up. No good. And rebound for Eki. Well, that was a good job there by Stevens to first get the steal. I think that was a, a little bit of a forced shot, though, with the floater there, not able to set into their offense at all. And maybe could have find, found my Fs earlier. But now, once again, right here, Eki, she was able in the last possession to get offensive rebound there. Another chance. And that time, it's going to be a jump ball, but it will stay here for the Saints. So Eki already getting involved on the offensive boards. You said that right, Eki, letting her presence be known. That one thrown in, size advantage for Eki, throws it up, no good. It's going to stay with the Saints that time. Possession staying on this side of the court, the near side. 
Vanessa Cook to inbound, gets it into Eki again. Working around outside, trying to find the ball. Tipped out of the hands by Stockt. Or now guarded by Emma Royce, one of Homestead's, if not Homestead's best defender. Ball given to Eki inside, has a chance and gets fouled going up for the shot. That's going to be Allie Stevens' first. And watch out for her to get into foul trouble tonight going up against in a size disadvantage against Giselle Eki. Yeah, Eki once again getting a good entry pass down low to her. She wasn't able to convert, but it's because she was fouled. But if she keeps on getting these looks, she's going to need to convert on them. You can tell that this offense works through her. They, it was the same way last year. Trying to do the same thing this year, just with more experience. Both free throws no good for Eki. Trap guard. Royce runs right through it. Goes in a Euro step layup for Emma Royce. Boy, has she been incredible as of recent. What a great take all the way by Emma Royce. And you mentioned it, that Euro step was beautiful right there. Fooled the defender and was able to get the easy finish. Had 20 points versus Pike. A tough road game down in Indianapolis. She has done an amazing job. Eki, no good on that layup. Tipped and Royce instinctually grabs it, but feet out of bounds. Possession staying again with the Saints. Not much you can do there, but once again, Eki getting up a shot. The Spartans there to cause some problems, and the defense continues to look good. Great court vision by Maya Epps. Now taking this one to the basket, lays it up and in with the right hand. 6-0 start and a timeout called by Bishop Dwanger. Homestead in full control. And that was a great start of this game for the Spartans. Epps been able to drive twice. That another one got there by Emma Royce, and that's what's gotten them out to this lead. But it's also been defensively. They've been so locked down up to this point that even though they're getting shots up, Eki's been able to get four shots up in this game. They've all been somewhat contested, and she hasn't been able to convert. Time and time again, we keep seeing it. Homestead just swallows you on defense. They come... They come in and just press you so hard. No good shots seem to ever be able to get up against this Homestead defense, and that's being seen right now. They know, Coach Parker knows who each team's best player is and make sure that his girls know there's an emphasis to not let her get an easy shot up. Definitely, and it's really surprising to see how good this team has been, especially defensively in the paint. Even though they lost Ayana Patterson a year ago, who was a 6'3 presence, They've been able to play some team basketball defensively, and that's really helped them out. Pressure from Evie Bottoms. Loses the basketball, and a foul call as she went for it. A slide tackle. So that ball trickles out of bounds. A little too aggressive there by Evie, but you still got to like the effort trying to get the ball there and trying to get your team the ball back. Inbound now for Vanessa Cook. Gets it inside to Aslagi, who gets it ripped out of her hands. But they're going to call a jump ball, say both girls had the hand on it. Possession still goes, and it'll still be a turnover for the Saints. Right now, the Spartans just look so much faster out there than the Saints. Defensively, they're jumping into pass lanes. They've been trying to get a little too aggressive at times, and that's led to easier passes with backdoor looks. But... They just look so much faster out there than the Saints, and it's worked to their advantage. That's been the advantage all season long. Spartans may not have the size, but they have the speed as Allie Stevens puts up a shot, a long two, and gets it to fall. 8-0 lead and for the Spartans. Allie Stevens can hit shots from just about everywhere. She is such a good shooter, and you do not want to give her that much space. If she gets that much space, she will make it 100% of the time it feels like it's that one goes out of bounds off of the Spartans first substitution for the Saints Eki goes to the sideline now Saints to inbound inside to the newly in the game Clara Burns that one an errant pass goes out of bounds Spartan ball and that was a forced pass there by Burns she threw it into Double coverage there. She had a player cutting, but still was not a necessary pass to make. And because of that, the Spartans get the ball back. Stock drives inside, kicks it out. Stevens absolutely swatted away. Spartans retain possession. 
Epps has it. Pump fake drives inside on multiple defenders. Lays it up off the glass. No good. Gets her own rebound. And the put back. She gets fouled on. Two shots coming up for Maya Epps. Dwanger really needs to box out there. You cannot let Maya Epps get another chance. I mean, it was a little bit longer of a rebound there the ball coming out more than they probably expected based on how far that shot was from is just a layup but still you got to box out my up she's the only spartan really around you there and you got two saints and you cannot let spartans get even more chances and here comes the secondary squad for the spartans two freshmen gabby helsom and whitney angerbrook alongside sanaya sandlin who has been a presence for the spartans all season long coming off the bench Probably one of the best box out defenders on this Homestead Spartan team as Maya Epps makes another free throw. And now with these new players in for Homestead, really they're just looking to find their rhythm out there as a newer unit right now. A great pass there by Maya Epps. And that she's one of those freshmen out there right now. There's three of them. She is the main one. She's a starter out of them, but the other two can play as well. Whitney Ankenbrook and Gabby Helsum have both been really solid this year, so they're just going to be trying to find the rhythm more and more as they play on the varsity level. Dwanger trying to get something going on offense. A wild shot put up and a rebound for Sanaya Sandlin. Averaging only 1.7 rebounds per game. But it feels like so many more in the big moments where she's on the court for a long period of time. She's just such a great job of boxing out. She gets the ball underneath, drives to the lane, no good, gets her own rebound and fouled, sent to the free throw line. And we were talking about it earlier, how Sanaya Sandlin is just a good rebounder overall. She only has 1.7 right now, but they're able to get it over the defender, even though she missed her first one, following up after that and with that, She's getting rewarded by going to the line. First free throw, no good for Sanaya Sandlin. From the line so far this year, she is a 66% free throw shooter. Missing that first one. Second one, no good as well, and an easy rebound for Grace Barfield. Every the outside, open shot that time, no good for a sloggy. And there is going to be another jump ball possession, this time to Bishop Dwanger. And shocking not to see Emma Royce get the ball there. She is so good, especially defensively, especially rebounding. And it's really shocking not to see her come up with that one. Homestead pressure forcing that ball out of bounds. A turnover again for Bishop Dwanger. It's 12-0 to zero right now. Spartans... Probably looking to shut out the Saints in this first quarter. That would be impressive. That shot swatted away. That was by good. Taylor Eslagi. Good help side defense right there to shift over. Realize that you don't have the high advantage in Sanai. Sandlin does. So good job by the Saints to shift over and they were able to get a block. Ball inbounded to Emma Royst. Driving and kicking that one out. Pump fake shot, that would have been deep for Whitney Ankenbrook, and watch out Maya Epps to the basket, untouched. Seems like she might just be able to walk to the basket every single time they're on the offense. Maya Epps has had everything so far this game. Three point attempt, up and good! Vanessa Cook puts Bishop Dwanger on the board. The first open look from beyond the arc falls in for the Saints. Ankenbrook jab step. Coach Parker trying to push the pace. That ball swatted off the fingertips of Maya Epps, and that's going to be an over and back. And timeout called by Bishop Dwanger. 30 second timeout. Coach Parker didn't seem to be happy with that. At all, as you see, finally able to get some points there. The Saints, it's Vanessa Cook, wide open. And apparently that was Homestead who called the timeout. So Coach Parker not liking what his team was doing on offense there. And that just kind of comes with the more inexperienced players out there. You have a junior, a sophomore, and three freshmen out there right there. So definitely some more inexperience. But 
call that timeout and try to get it figured out. Claire Landergan comes into the game for the Spartans. Right now, Maya Epps, the only starter on the court for Homestead. She's up to eight points already in this first quarter. Doing an amazing job so far in this game. And if there's one word we can use to describe by Epps, it's confidence. And we have been seeing that tonight. She is not afraid of driving to the basket, no matter who is in there. 100%. We've seen it game in and game out that she is not afraid. And she talked about earlier that she had been playing up, already playing against high school players, and that has definitely helped her out. That shot not far enough away from the basket for Gabby Helsom as that one trickles out of bounds. Turnover back to the Saints. Grace Barfield brings it up the court, crossing half court. We said earlier it's the first boys girl double header of the year. Homestead's band in attendance and letting themselves be heard tonight. Double dribble called on Bishop Dwanger, on Barfield Bishop Dwanger. Now the ball will go back into the hands of the Spartans. The band was working to well effect right there as they were able to disrupt Barfield and ended up causing a double dribble by her there. Spartans once again looking good defensively. Ball swinging around the outside. Helsum trying to drive to the basket, takes contact, grabs her own rebound, kicks outside. Whitney Yankenbrook for three, no good. And a jump ball going to be called on that rebound. Two freshmen for the Spartans jumping up for that one. Epps and Helsum. Possession arrow stays with Homestead. That's already the fourth jump ball we've seen of this game. Both these teams battling for it when it's up in the air. Ankenbrook into Sandlin, who's done a great job so far dealing with Eki. And an offensive foul on Sanaya Sandlin. I, a little bit of announcer's jinx there. Called for the offensive foul, fouling of Giselle Eki. Yeah, just a moving screen right there, but she, she didn't really need to do it as Whitney Ankenbrook was going to be wide open in the corner for a good look for three. We'll see if Bishop Dwanger tries to hold for the final shot here. With 36 seconds left, they're not going to. A prayer shot thrown up, and it's going to be rebounded by Gabby Helsom. Spartans in transition, passing back to Whitney Ankerbrook, who drains that three with nothing but nylon. What limits you? Too small, too old, insecure, broken. You have no limits. Rethink your limits. Welcome back to Homestead High School as the Homestead Spartans lead by 14 heading in to the second quarter. And besides a chucked up three-pointer, it has been near perfection for the Spartans defense. Yeah, they've looked really good shutting down the Saints up to this point, especially Eki. She has been able to get some looks down low. She's been able to get the ball down low, but the Spartans have been all over her. Under some pressure as Sloggy has to give it away. Ball rolling around the outside, just trying to get something underneath that pass error and gobbled up by Evie Bottoms. Has to get it away. Royce trying to force something back out to Bottoms. Over to Stock on the right side. Open space for Stock to shoot. Unable to get that one to fall. And that one's going to go out of bounds off of the Saints. 
And that's just really bad communications right there by the Saints. No Spartan anywhere near them and three Saints right there to get the board, but none of them knew that they were going up against each other and lost the ball because of it. Miscommunication between Spartans. Royce trying to find Evie Bottoms. She was moving around to the corner. Turnover back to Bishop Dwanger. Aslagi guarded by Emma Royce. A dangerous defender. It's proven to be this so far this year. Dwanger just trying to work around the outside. Find a way to penetrate this Homestead defense. No luck so far. Gadomski unable to do anything as well as that pass just going to be thrown backwards. And out of bounds it goes for the Saints. A lot of miscommunication going on for the Saints right now. I mean, it was a similar errant pass that we just saw Emma Royce throw on the play before. So both these teams having a little bit of trouble coming back into the second quarter. Stevens to inbound, gets it into Evie Bottoms. And we'll see who the Spartans try to get involved here in the second quarter as they try to eye the mercy rule point as Stevens throws up a three air ball. Freem comes down with it and throws it out of hope to try to keep it alive and in transition. Turnover back to the Spartans as Loggy had Cook in transition, just unable to hold on to the ball. And that's how this night has gone for Bishop Dwanger. Yeah, that should have been an easy two points right there. But once again, they weren't able to connect on a routine pass. And that kind of just sums it up how it's been going. Homestead probably just looking to get as many people involved as possible. Molly Stock, we said earlier, has been quiet as of recent as that ball just goes out of bounds for the Spartans. Molly Stock been fairly quiet in the last few games, but if the Spartans can find a way to get her more involved, she, this offense is just completely deadly. Yeah, she is so good from behind the arc, but is also able to get to the line a good amount and able to get some good looks from there as well. So just overall, Molly Stock is a solid player, and they need to get her more involved. And if that's the one critique, as Epps steals that one on the press, driving to the basket, lays it up and in. And all ready to double digits on the night is Maya Epps with 10 of Homestead's 19. She's been so dominant once again. They're a steal now, again, for the Spartans. And Maya Epps has been the main scorer on this team, but everyone's been doing it on defense. Epps trying to find... We'll stop calling for in transition as Epps travels, trying to get the ball away. Another big mistake that Coach Parker is not happy about. Yeah, just a little bit of a freshman mistake there. And, I mean, she's been able to get a lot of experience, but she's still so young. And a hard foul on the ground for Maya Epps, and she stands there holding her head. She took a shot to the ground, and this is not going to be a fun injury to see now we're going to take a break here when we come back hopefully we'll find out if my F's is okay Maya Epps was able to get up under her own power and head over to the sideline where I'm sure she is going to be checked on for a possible concussion. A very hard hit to the ground. Definitely not something that you like to see. Yeah, always scary when someone goes down like that and hits their head, but got to see what they're going to do without her as they've dominated, but they're going to be without their leading score for at least the near future. Hillary Adams comes into the game in absence of Maya Epps. Right now it's a five guard set as Molly Stock throws up a jumper no good. And we'll see what defense Homestead goes through. They were operating a press but while my S was in the game. It looks like they might just switch back to a simple man with her out. Cook operating at the top of the key, trying to work the ball around. Nothing there for court. 
And that ball had a hand by on it was Molly Stock, but still with Cassidy Court. And even though she hasn't been doing too well offensively, Molly Stock is also a presence defensively. She's been able to get her hand a few times in the passing lane just in this game. And it's led to some easy points for the Spartans. Some great vision that time gave Bishop Dwanger their fifth point, fourth and fifth points of the game with Vanessa Cook laying it up and in. Stock finds Bottoms in the corner, who throws up a nice shot, no good. Rebound by Royce in the putback, up and in, and one. Count the bucket. Emma Royce, confident as ever. And a year ago, that is not something you would have said about her. She was timid to shoot the ball. She's always been a great defender, rebounder, passer, but she's was seem seemingly scared to shoot it a year ago, being a sophomore, stepping in to a starter role. But this year, she's had a full year under her belt, junior, and we've seen her attack the paint a lot. Her and Maya Epps, two guards that have done an amazing job with their confidence this year, gathering rebounds and shots inside the paint. Is that free throw no good for Emma Royce, an area where she actually struggled quite a lot last year shooting 81% from the line this year. So that ball sails out of bounds. Going back to kind of what we were saying earlier about Molly Stock, if there's any criticism of the, of the team this year, just from my view, it has been not really able, being able to get Molly Stock that involved in the offense. Last year and the year prior, she was a serious offensive weapon. Last year shooting 45% from three, as Molly Stock gets the ball and lays it up and in. I just keep jinxing the game tonight. Two points there for Molly Stock. But overall, over the last few games, hasn't, hasn't been able to do much. Only averaging 8.3 points per game so far this year versus last year where she was averaging in double digits. And... It seems like they haven't really ran as many set plays for her. And, I mean, you don't have a screener like you had Ayana Batterson in the last two years. And, obviously, we knew she drew so much attention that that could be part of the reason why there aren't these as many chances for Stevens or Stock from behind the arc. But Stevens has still been able to get hers, and Stock hasn't really found her rhythm yet. Stock still taking advantage of the opportunities when they're there as Royce drains a fadeaway three from the corner and a timeout again being forced to be taken by Bishop Dwanger. Emma Royce has just bloomed offensively so far this year. Well, she's up to nine points right now, second most in this game, and she's really struggled from behind the arc this year compared to a year ago shooting 17% this year, whereas a year ago she was around 40, even at times above 40%. So struggled from a year ago, but she's been driving a lot more and been able to get a lot more looks. And a lot of the things that are different from this year are obviously because, because Ayana Patterson is gone, but mainly it's just because there's no forward, there's no height, there's no size in the starting lineup for the Spartans. The biggest size that you have, Ali Stevens, in the starting lineup is a shooting guard. That's her natural position. Maybe a shooting four, her natural spot being that three slot. But she's a shooter. She can shoot from anywhere on the court, and that's what she's best at. Having three people that primarily play outside the perimeter in an offense isn't ideal for Coach Parker, and that's why we're seeing him give Sanaya Sandlin, Gabby Helsom, more playing times. Gabby Helsom, a true forward, hoping to work her more in the starting role, and then Sanaya Sandlin, a possible center for the Spartans in the future. Yeah, really just trying to establish a post presence with one of these players that's coming off the bench because none of the starters really have that post presence. We saw at the start of the year, Coach Parker try to go to Allie Stevens and have her go post up a few times, but overall that did not work too well. So with that, they've got to try some other players, and that's what we've been seeing lately. And as we're just about halfway through the year, we're still seeing the experimenting by Coach Barker, but slowly it seems like he's starting to find his offense as the turnovers have been down from the start of the year. The plays seem a lot smoother on offense. The defense still incredible, but we'll see how it shapes out for the rest of the year. Of course, they're looking forward to that 
Those huge games versus Northrop as Eki puts up a shot. No good. The putback, no good. Eki with another chance, no good. Here comes a fourth chance, and finally it falls for Clara Burns. And with all those easy chances they were getting down there, you'd expect them to make one, and finally, like you said, Clara Burns able to get it to go, but still the Spartans' defense at that time, they were not doing a good job at boxing out, but only allowed seven points up to this point. Stock with a three-pointer, no good. Rebounded by Sidney Freem. Pass inside to Royce. Back out and in. Bishop Dwanger so far doing a pretty good job as of late defending as Royce puts up a wild shot. Looked like she was just trying to draw some contact. No whistle there. Homestead defending a 19-point lead, but Dwanger has seemed to somewhat find a stride on the defensive end. We'll see what happens on the offensive end. Ball on the ground, picked up by Hillary Adams. Homestead trying to work in transition. Stock one-handed pass to Royce, who lays it up and in with the foul. 11 points on the night for Emma Royce, and she's headed for a chance to put it to 12. And she's been so good in this game. She's now the leading scorer in this game as Maya Epps is set to check back in, and she is going to be coming in for Emma Royce as well. So it's good to see Epps checking back in, but Emma Royce has once again stepped up this season and become a better scorer. It certainly is nice to see her back in the game knowing that she is okay. About to check back into the game as Roy subs out with 12 points. Epps enters the game with 10. Those two have combined for all but seven of Homestead's points tonight. Barfield bringing it up for the Saints. A minute 40 left in this first half. The fans starting to pile in. The atmosphere tonight feeling a little bit different. An SAC doubleheader. Homestead obviously favored to sweep tonight. You never know what can happen in the SAC as that three-pointer no good off the glass. Homestead trying to work fast in transition. Helsum checks out. Passes it to Freem. All the way across, Allie Stevens open three, and it's not often she misses those. Is that one a little bit too long? That was a great cross-court pass by Cindy Freem. We haven't seen her play too much this year as there's some younger players, but that was a great steal right there right after that. And it was really good vision by her to find Stevens, and that's one that Stevens would like to have back. Helsum on the right side. Ack over to Epps, driving into the basket with the right hand. A little switcheroo at the last second. Maya Epps puts that in with 40 seconds to go. Another great take by Maya Epps. And once again, she is not afraid. And it's good to see her moving like she normally does after taking that fall. Ball on the ground. It's going to be called a jump ball with possession arrow pointing in favor of the Spartans. And 25 seconds left. The Spartans up 24 right now. You expect them to probably just hold this one for one final shot and go into the locker room with a big lead. Epps over to Helsum on the right side. We'll see who the play is for. Epps trapped underneath, trying to get it out and away. Stevens with the open three, and again, misses an open three. Frame with the putback gets fouled. Throwing up the shot, and Shield heads to the line. Sydney Freem playing really well so far in this game. She's been able to find Stevens open for three, get a great steal, and then that time getting the board and then going back up with it. Sydney Freem now, I'm not going to say it. Actually, I'll say it because the announcer's jinx doesn't exist. She's 100% from the free throw line so far this year. I don't know what to say anymore. That's the third time this half Sydney Freem Free throw, no good. That ball on the ground. Possession arrow pointed in favor of Bishop Dwanger. They'll have three seconds to throw up one last shot before the half. You got to think there's going to be a set play. Try to get one of your players open here. and Maybe have it be number three, Cassie Court. 
Court with the ball, throws it up, and it's in! Right before the end of the half, two more points out of the scoreboard for Bishop Dwanger, 32 to nine. As now we're gonna send it down to Southern Porter, Braxton Hall, who's standing by with Coach Rod Parker. Thanks, Anthony. Coach, your team got off to a hot start and now hold a 23-point lead at the break. What, what's your team done best in the first half? Well, I thought we did a good job offensively of moving the ball on certain possessions. We got a lot of good looks. Um, and I thought we took care of the basketball, maximized our possessions. Uh, defensively, in the second half, we got to do a better job protecting the paint, give a little bit better weak side help and communicating. But uh, overall, pretty happy with their performance. All right, thanks, Coach. Anthony, back to you. Thank you, Braxton. And Coach Parker seemed relatively pleased with that first half as the Spartans now lead 32 to 9. Southwest Allen County Schools is our home. Home to dedicated staff, passionate teachers, and a generous community that values and supports education. We believe our culture of learning embraces change, flexibility, and innovation. We believe our schools serve as the hub of our diverse community. We value hard work, attention to craft, and tenacity. We ask questions, share ideas, and work together to find new ways to do new things, great things, for our students, for our district, and for our community. In partnership with parents, we believe learning encompasses critical thinking, creative thinking, collaboration, communication, citizenship, and resiliency. We take pride in our successes and share in our accomplishments. We are Southwest Allen County Schools, preparing today's learners for tomorrow's opportunities. Welcome back to Homestead High School as the Homestead Spartans lead the Bishop Dwanger Saints 32-9. to And Noah, so far it has been a great defensive performance from the Spartans as we expected coming into this game. But, man, they have played phenomenal. I think even outdoing our expectations. Yeah, they have really stopped everything from Dwanger. Dwanger has been able to get some shots to go, but even those were heavily contested. And they were able to get one really good look from Vanessa Cook who was able to knock a white knock down a wide open three but other than that we really haven't seen any open looks at all from the Saints and now we're going to take a look at our stats from the first half as the Homestead Spartans obviously completely dominating defensively and that can be seen in the percentage for Dwanger 
22% from the field, 33% from three, and haven't made a free throw. And Homestead surprisingly outdoing Bishop Dwanger in the rebounding game. Yeah, that is just right there. You see it, complete dominance all across the board there by the Spartans. I mean, they haven't they made more threes. They haven't shot it as well percentage wise, but still looking a lot better, making nine more shots overall, four more free throws. But that's definitely somewhere that Coach Parker is going to want to improve. Only going 50% from the line up to this point, you cannot like that, especially going down the road in closer matchups. You're going to need to be better there, but more than doubling Dwanger in rebounds, more than tripling them and less turnovers there. So overall, that defense is being shown there just from the stats. And man, yeah, how about those turnovers for the Spartans? 16 turnovers for the Bishop Dwanger Saints to only five of Homestead. Most of those just being mental mis miscues from the Spartans, but a lot of the Bishop Dwanger was ones being steals. I mean, we saw when Homestead was pressing, it was not even close to Bishop Dwanger was not even close to getting the ball down the court. Yeah, and it's really just surprising to see how well that press was working for the Spartans, and then they went away for it a little bit. I, we've been yet to see them go back to it, but still, it worked really well when they were at it. And I think part of going away was because of Maya Epps not being in the game, leaving because of injury. Now we're going to take a look at some scores from around the area as there are a couple big games tonight. Don't have any scores so far, but there are a couple big games that we're looking towards. A big one being Snyder versus Wayne girls basketball. Wayne actually doing a very good job so far this year. They are 7-3. and three. The girls basketball team 7-3 and three after years upon years of struggle. They're going up against Snyder, two of those second-tier teams in the SAC. Yeah, really good for Wayne so far this year. We saw them play Spartans early on in their season, and Spartans look pretty good, but right after that, Wayne, Wayne just went on a big run there and were able to win a good amount in a row and get settled into their offense. So that's definitely going to be an interesting one. I mean, Carroll, you expect them to win that easily. Northrop, expect them to win that easily. North side and south side could be a little bit closer as both teams are down from years in the past. But with that, you'd think north side would be able to get it. But it is a rivalry matchup. You never know what's going to happen in a rivalry matchup. South side and north side, two of the bottom teams in the SAC. We'll see what's happening what's going to happen with that game. And Noah, let's talk a little bit about the game later tonight as you see fans really showing up for pre preparing to show up late in this girls game, most likely for the boys game later. Homestead boys versus Bishop Dwanger boys. Homestead out to a solid 2-0 start, one of the best defenses in the entire state. And Bishop Dwanger probably not off to the best start that they want on the boys' side. Yeah, Spartans have looked really good in their first two games, winning 56 to 39, and then in the other one they were able to win 54 to 14. So, excuse me, 53 to 14. So that was huge games here at home for the Spartans, and they'll look to extend it to a third one. Whereas Norwell just dominated. Bishop Dwanger in the game at Dwanger so definitely going to need to improve if they want to have a chance against the Spartans tonight. And the game tomorrow for the girls in Ohio at Notre Dame Academy as part of a home and home scheduled between two teams. We don't know too much about Notre Dame Academy being out of state. There's nothing really to compare them to besides the game last year where Homestead was able to inflict the Indiana Mercy rule on Notre Dame Academy winning by 38 points. Homestead, we'll see if they can do the same this year. Of course, very different team this year compared to last year. But you, I don't know if you can expect as a full swing around from a 38-point game, but you never know. Yeah, that's a big make. That's a big difference to make up just in a year. But once again, like you said, we don't know as much. They were a young team last year, so Notre Dame Academy could couldn't be making a big turnaround in. Homestead is going to be a good test for them. Definitely will be a good test. Homestead Spartans, of course, looking to get more and more on their schedule. We're going to take a two-minute break here, but when we come back, we are going to be getting set for the second half of play between Homestead and Bishop Dwanger. Ooh, I can't wait to get you home. 
I'm gonna eat you up when you go home. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Can't wait. I'm just gonna bite you. Oh baby, that looks amazing. Marcos, pizza lovers get it. You don't plan on getting an injury, so why should you plan ahead to care for one? At Orthostat, you don't have to. Whether you get hurt on the job or on the field, or if you're experiencing sudden localized pain, we fix the unexpected. Our walk-in clinics provide emergency access to a full range of diagnostic, non-surgical, and surgical treatments. And the best part is, there's never an appointment or referral needed. So you can get in. Welcome back to Homestead High School as we are just getting set for tip-off of the second half between Homestead Girls Basketball and Bishop Dwanger Girls Basketball. And in that first half is complete dominance by the Spartans on both ends of the floor with that defensively led to their offensive points and with that it was really good. Defense was the story for the Spartans in the first half, we'll see if that continues to be the story. As now, Emma Royce is set to inbound it to Maya Epps. And is once again good to see Maya Epps back out there. She was able to pick up two points after coming out of the game. And Maya Epps and Emma Royce both have 12 points in this game. Allie Stevens trying to post up down low, throws up a shot and makes it. A desperate shot thrown up by Ali Stevens, and it falls. It's now Taylor Aslage trying to work some offense. Eki gets a shot up. No good. She has just had no luck tonight. Ball stays on this side for Bishop Dwanger. Fall to the ground, and that one's going to go out of bounds off of a K. Good defense right there. Started with Molly Stock once again rotating over, and even though she has not had a great night offensively, defensively, she has been there and been active. And then Maya F's getting on the floor, diving for it. Even though she's going up against a bigger defender, she was able to get the ball back for her team. And after taking that hit earlier in the game, she's still showing no fear. As Allie Stevens launches that three, and that is her range. Five feet behind the three-point line is where Allie Stevens makes every single shot. No scientist could explain it, but she is just unreal from that range. Maya Epps fouled, grabbing that rebound. That foul going to go on Vanessa Cook. Well, you watch this replay here, and you just say, holy cannoli, she is way behind the arc there. And she had two wide-open looks just from right at the arc, and she wasn't able to knock those down. But apparently when she's farther back, she, it makes it easier for her. Holy cannoli indeed. Allie Stevens, unlimited range as she grabs the ball underneath the basket and lays it up and in. Already this half, she has exploded offensively, grabbing six points just in this half alone. Seven. Eki throws up a shot, no good. Rebounded that put back. Nice up and in for Vanessa Cook, who has really been the only voice of offense 
for Bishop Dwanger so far in this game as Royce drives to the basket. No good offensive rebound for Molly Stocking. Quickly hit out of her hands by Giselle Ecke. Offensively for the Saints, you're mentioning it. Vanessa Cook has really been the only star offensively up to seven points out of their team's 11. Claire Landergan hasn't played much in this game. She's had a very nice performance. She had a very nice performance here at home a couple games ago. It's that three-pointer no good for Molly Stuck. Good job there by Ali Stevens to once again deny the post entry pass that time getting too aggressive and it leads to easy points right there for a K. But still with that, she done a pretty good job of denying over and over. After so many attempts, Giselle Ecke finally gets a shot to fall. Her first two points of the night. Jump ball possession. As a whistle called for a jump ball possession arrow, points in favor of the Saints. Taylor Eslagi bringing the ball up the court, a stagnant offense for Bishop Dwanger so far in this game. Rebound that time, Ali Stevens looks like she's trying to push the pace. Also thought about a three, finds Royce for the open three, no dagger that time. Rebound for Giselle Ecke. And to start this half, the offense has looked better for the Saints as they've been able to get four points compared to they had nine in all of the first half, but still the defense has been able to shut a lot down. Cassidy Court in transition, one-on-one -on -one with Claire Landergan. No good and a foul called on the rebound. That one's gonna go on Molly Stock of the Spartans. And a timeout called by Homestead. Coach Parker seeing something that he's not happy about as the Spartans lead by 26 points. Yeah, the Spartans out, coming out into this half, they have not looked as good as they have with other quarters or at least a start. I mean, they did have a slow start as well in that second quarter. So slow start here in the third isn't completely uncommon to start, but they've just got to turn it around, settle back into their offense have to settle back into their offense. Allie Stevens taking control of the Spartans offense, taking the reins. Butter outside of her, really nothing that catches the eye. Maya Epps and Emma Royce at 11 and 12 points in the first half. Inbound that time. That's Lage and a foul underneath. That one is going to be Molly Stock second in just a matter of seconds. And we'll see if Coach Parker, it looks like Coach Parker will be forced to make the change. Second foul goes to Molly Stock. Not really worth getting in foul trouble in a game you lead by 26. That's the estimate. That's the call by Coach Parker. It's now Eki driving the basket, trying to post up and is Going to get called for the travel, dragging her pivot foot. Turnover back to the Spartans. Just trying to do a little too much there. Eki was, and she had options to pass as Now we see a zone defense for the Saints, a different look, not one that we've seen up to this point in the game. And that time, just couldn't catch it there. Maya Epps could not, and obviously that's got to be one of the most frustrating things for Coach Parker unforced airs just like that. There's nobody by Epps and she's probably thinking about where to go with it before she actually went, before she actually caught it, but still interesting to see the new look. We keep talking about the Spartans defense that has been so good today. As Eki gets triple teamed, a three launched up in and out for Cassidy Court. A wrestle to the ground for the rebound, a jump ball, possession arrow in favor of the Spartans. So far, we've talked about the great defense from the Spartans, but the offense really hasn't been 100% stellar for Homestead in this game, at least not what they wanted to. They would have hoped to get to a lead by at least 35 points by now, force the mercy rule, but nothing really there for Homestead. 
But with the zone look, you could maybe get some good looks from behind the arc. That's what zone provides. When you're playing against the zone, a lot of times you're able to get open shots, and that's what the Spartans love as they're a pretty good three-point shooting team. Three-pointer thrown up by Allie Stevens. No good. And Eki with another rebound. She has done an amazing job in the post today, getting the rebound, just not having much luck scoring. As that ball slapped and tipped away, Amber Royce comes out with it, trying to move fast in transition. This is where she's deadly. Draws contact. And one for the third time today. Emma Royce, how about her? She is having a phenomenal game. And once again, driving and drawing a foul. And then on top of that, finishing, even though she got fouled, she has been phenomenal. 81% so far this year. Hits that free throw. Tonight, two for three from beyond the arc, up to 14 points on the game. Driving inside and posting up is Vanessa Cook. Able to get that one to fall. Nine points tonight of Bishop Dwanger's 15. Allie Stevens with a long shot. Three knocks that one in. She's seen to find her groove, and that's just how Allie Stevens rolls. When she finds that momentum, she's unstoppable. Yeah, she had two points in that first half, 10 in the second half already. Just in less than six minutes, she's had 10 points, and you mentioned it, once she's in a groove, she's there for a while. She's really a streaky shooter, but she gets hot quick. Ball working around, Maya Epps to the basket without a doubt, driving again with so much confidence, finishing that time with the left hand. It's right, it's left, she can finish from no matter what side she wants to. Only a freshman, but a true talent that we're going to see blossom over the next few years. As you see, this three-pointer from Ali Stevens, a moonshot, but never a doubt. And this is going to be a battle, maybe, within the team going back and forth on who's going to end up being the leading scorer in this one between Maya Epps and Emma Royce, as they're both very near in points. 14 points for each of them, and don't forget about Ali Stevens, who also has 12 points. Yeah, Ali Stevens getting her name there too as well, especially if she's going to be hitting these open threes. She's gotten a lot of looks and now finally starting to knock them down. Vanessa Cook trying to post up. Nothing there. Three-pointer up. No good. Rebounded by Gabby Helson. She's done a great job rebounding. That ball's tipped out of bounds by Taylor Slogge. Molly Stock back into the game. Out goes Emma Royce and Allie Stevens. So now that race you were talking about, Maya Epps, the only one left on the court. She's got a little bit of an advantage being the only one of those three on the court now with an opportunity to become the leading scorer as the Spartans lead by 32 points. And she's, Maya Epps just needs to keep on driving like she has been. She's been so successful when doing that today, and there's no reason to stop it. Homestead just three points away from enforcing the mercy rule. Outside, beautiful passing. Bottoms drives inside, finds Epps on the outside. No good. That was the look that Homestead wanted. And a turnover back the other way. Cassidy Court in transition, contested, no good. Great pressure there from Evie Bottoms, forcing the mental miscue by Cassidy Court, missing the wide open layup. Yeah, good job there by Bottoms to get back on defense. Even though she was trailing at first, she was able to make up for it and get the stop. Whitney Ankerbrook to inbound to Maya Epps. Tonight is future Spartans League here at Homestead High School between both girls and boys basketball games. The future of Homestead High School is going to be introduced. They're going to get to take the court, the coaches, the teams. This is always a fun time in December. We had the girls do it earlier this year, and now the boys get to do it. It's just a special thing that Homestead does every year. Yeah, once, like you said, getting a look at the future of what Homestead basketball might be like. That three-pointer, no good for Molly Stock. That ball out of bounds off of Whitney Ankenbrook's left shoulder. And a turnover back to Bishop Dwanger. Homestead, they haven't been able to get that 35th point 
to enforce the mercy rule in these past two minutes. They've been searching for it, just unable to get anything really to fall. With under a minute left, it's going to be a race to see if they can get to the mercy rule before the fourth quarter starts. Just three points away now as they're up to a 32-point lead. Grace Barfield working around the outside. Bishop Dwanger being very complacent on this possession, not wanting to turn the ball over, probably just trying to maybe hold for the last shot. Barfield at the top of the key in no rush. Piper inside that ball on the ground, stolen away by Whitney Ankerbrook and pass to Gabby Helsom, 20 seconds left. Spartans will probably be able to get the last shot here. Molly Stock, open three, and drains it. Molly Stock, welcome back to Beyond the Arc. Three-pointer for Molly Stock is the mercy rule for the Homestead Spartans. Three seconds left. They have to throw up a shot, and nothing will go up. That is the end of the third quarter. With eight minutes to go, Homestead leads 50-15. to 15. What limits you? Too small, too old. Insecure. Broken. You have no limits. Rethink your limits. Welcome back to Homestead High School. Both teams in a huddle now, trying to figure out what's going to go down in these last eight quarters. Expect a lot of youth to be into the game for both Bishop Dwanger and for the Homestead Spartans. This game really has just been dominated by Homestead. Dwanger hasn't really had much of a say outside of nine points from Vanessa Cook, nine of Bishop Dwanger's. 15. Eki, one of the top scorers on Bishop Dwinger, really hasn't been able to find much so far this game. Only two points. Yeah, Cook has been the leading scorer, like you mentioned, and she's been a the only one really able to score in this half up to this point, but maybe they'll be able to find their offense in the fourth quarter. Barfield forcing and transition. Looks like a lot of youth out for Bishop Dwanger right now. Both Anna and Maggie Piper, both juniors, didn't start this game, didn't get much playing time till this second half. The reaching foul is going to be called in on Sydney Cream, trying to swat that ball away. And right now, the only point guard out there for the Spartans is Molly Stock so at some point you'd expect another bench player to most likely come in as she's also the only starter out there as of now but they still need some presence there with someone who can handle the ball. Ball all over the place Whitney Ankenbrook fighting for it and that one's going to be a jump ball great effort there by Whitney Frank Ankenbrook gets coach Parker on his feet as that one will Point the ball in favor of the Spartans. Molly Stock actually ran the point last year for Homestead as they really didn't have a true point guard. Maya Epps has now filled that role this year as Nice Sandlin drives to the basket. That one high into the sky. Barely kisses the glass. Trickling now out of bounds. Not really sure what Brooklyn Freeman was doing there, but that ball was easily there for her to grab and she just walked it go she watched it go right out of bounds when she could have easily grabbed and gave the ball back to the Saints this game has been pretty straightforward so far Spartans dominating on defense and just finding ways to score on offense nothing much for Bishop Dwanger these last two games just and end to a huge high of sporting events throughout the day. This time of the year, certainly one of the best in sports, high school sports especially. 
We're also seeing things like the World Cup with two big games today. Just It's just a fun time to be watching sports right now. And I think the crowd filling up here in Spartan Arena as being an example. Everyone's starting to get in that mood. Yeah, great games here today in the World Cup. I mean, Brazil lost a heartbreaker. And then Argentina almost choked and lost their 2-0 lead, but ended up winning in PKs both games going to PKs and it's going to be Argentina versus Croatia now. World Cup certainly has taken the world by storm. It's now a three-pointer launch up by Josie Wharton finding the scoreboard and some hope for Bishop Langer. Josie Wharton only a sophomore has actually controlled the ball quite a lot while being in the game in this fourth quarter for Bishop Dwanger. Cindy Frame trying to drive inside, throws up a shot and gets fouled in the process. It's gonna head to the line to shoot two. But here you take a look at Josie Wharton's three-pointer there and just a great shot right there and able to get another three to go down for the Saints. Sydney Frame went one for two earlier from the line and now one for three. Sydney, if you are re-watching this game right now, I apologize. You're 100% heading into this game. I did give you the announcer's jinx. Now she's going to attempt her second free throw. And that one up and good. She'll extend her point total to two points on the night. And with the last about four minutes left in this game, uh, once again, we're seeing players for both teams that don't necessarily play as much so just trying to establish an offense well whereas Dwanger great finish there by Eki they still have some of their starters in in this game so they're just trying to find a rhythm offensively in a real game Eki and Vanessa Cook still in the game coach Wachowski probably just wanting to give his girls a little bit more opportunity to get playing time that free throw, no good for Eki. Her total only four points tonight. Foul called that time, sending Anna Piper to the line to shoot two. And that shows you some of the inexperience not boxing out right there. And because of that, the Saints get rewarded. First free throw short, no good. Homestead leading by 31 right now. Clan Landrigan comes into the game for Whitney Ankerbrook. She had a solid game today, rebounding and passing the ball around. Second free throw, good for Piper. Press now for Bishop Dwanger. First time we're seeing this, just trying out new things. Why not? Snice Hanlon tracks that ball down, saves it. Keeps it in play for the Spartans. Hillary Adams double teamed at the top of the key. Landergan to frame in the corner. Spin move from Sanaya Sandlin. So close, no good. Would have been one of her best plays in a Homestead uniform. And over back, Eki, the other side trying to post up. And what defense from Sanaya Sandlin that time. Back in the hands of the Spartans, just under three minutes. Hillary Adams trying to get to the basket and it's fouled hard. She's gonna head to the line try to get her first points on the night. Hillary Adams has not played as much as years past, but she still provides one of the senior roles on this team, and we'll see if she can get some points for herself at the line. First free throw no good for Hillary Adams. Second attempt also no good. That ball is going to go out of bounds off of the Homestead Spartans. Ball back in play for Bishop Dwanger. Just the final minutes of the game. Instead of four, just trying to get experience. That three chucked up, no good. Rebounded by Sandlin. Landrigan in transition. Great pass that time. Amazing vision from Hillary Adams finding 
Claire Landrigan underneath the basket. Two more points added to the Spartans' name. Claire Landrigan standing wide open there in the paint, and like you said, great vision by Hillary Adams to find her. If you're looking at some comparisons around the SAC, Snyder held Bishop Dwanger to 15 points. So did Northrop. Northrop was able to put up 60 points on the Bishop Dwanger Saints and Snyder 53. So this Spartan performance tonight very, very similar to those. So we're just trying to draw some comparisons, see how the Spartans are going to match up in those latter SAC games. Second free throw up and good for Brooklyn Freem. Just over a minute left in this ball game. 55-21, Homestead leads. Grace Barfield throws that one out of bounds into possession for the Spartans. Still seeing a press from Bishop Dwanger. That ball, nice pass from Sydney Frame to Sanaya Sandlin. And that is how you beat a press, ladies and gentlemen. Great job that time from Sydney Frame being able to connect. And a great job there by Sanaya Sandlin to finish there as well and get her first two points of this game. You can see on the replay just great vision and a nice step from Sanaya Sandlin moving to the side and being able to lay that one up and in with her left hand. In some trouble now. Brooklyn Freem open on the outside, getting trapped in the corner, throws that one away to Claire Landergan. 15 seconds left. We'll see if the Spartans just try to hold out to end this game. Back to Landergan, eight seconds left. And now the cheering comes from the crowd. That is going to end this game. 57 to 21. The Homestead Spartans win with confidence. Yeah, that was a great performance by the Spartans. They were able to get a really easy win here tonight and completely dominated the Saints. And once again, showing you offensively and defensively how good this team is. A tribute to Coach Parker, too, as he was able to snuff out the defense incredibly by with his homestead Spartans. They were able to find the best two players on the court for Bishop Dwanger, Giselle Eki and Vanessa Cook and pretty much keep them from scoring. Yeah, just a great job to limit the Saints overall and then offensively it was three different players, Emma Royce, Mai Epps and Ali Stevens all in double digits in this one. Now we're going to get ready to send it down to our sideline reporter, Braxton Hall, who's standing by with our player of the game, Allie Stevens. Thanks, Anthony and Allie. Another big win tonight to stay at the top of the SAC. Talk about your team's performance tonight, especially on the defensive end. We played really good as a team together. We passed the ball. We made our open shots. And we got it inside and got some good rebounds. Tonight, multiple Spartans got into double, double figures. Talk about how much this team loves sharing the ball and getting everyone involved on the offensive end. Um, we're really good together on and off the court, and our chemistry is really good, which makes it good on the court. And we all just work together and play our hardest together. We're pretty close to the halfway point of the season. What do you feel the Spartans need to improve on in the second half of the season? Um, just get at it every day at practice, work on shooting the ball good, and uh, getting better on defense. And then big game out of state tomorrow as you head to Toledo to play Notre Dame Academy. What's it going to take to come out on top? Um, intensity. Um, competing and being five as one, uh, working together and just playing as a team. All right, thanks for your time and congrats on the win. Anthony, back to you. Thank you, Braxton, and a great game for Allie Stevens. We're going to take a look at our stats from the entire game as Homestead completely dominated the game defensively, forcing turnover after turnover. And that can just be seen, 25 turnovers for the Bishop Dwanger Saints, an amazing performance from the Spartan defense. Overall top that's there by the Spartans, and with that, they doubled the rebounds. And they got 30 to 14. They doubled turnover, forced turnovers 10 to 25, so that shows you defensively how they were so good. Once again, though, at halftime, they're struggling with free throws. You 
you still got to think that that's a place where they want to improve. They're only shooting 53% in this game. From the from three, they heated up a little bit as in the first half, they were two of eight, went three of eight in the second half, but they were able to get Ali Stevens some good looks, and Molly Stock was able to knock one down as well, but just hitting 13 more overall field goals is really what led this team. And the turnovers as well, being able to generate those points. A lot of offensive rebounds for the Homestead Spartans contributing as well to those more and more attempts for the Spartans this year. Like you mentioned, free throw percentage, they've averaged 73% tonight, just not their best shooting night. But again, it didn't really seem to matter as the defense was completely dominating. That's not what Coach Parker would tell you, but it didn't seem like Homestead needed to do too much to win this game. No, not at all. Just from from the start, they were dominating this one, and it's what you what we expected coming into this game. But still, you never know going into the game, and they were able to perform. You know what? Before we sign off, do you have any final thoughts? Well, this team can continue to have a bunch of different players scoring, not just focus on only one player and have a bunch of different options. They could make a pretty good run in the postseason. They certainly could. It's a tough sectional shaping out to be, but the Homestead Spartans definitely have the potential to go the distance. Entire Homestead Life crew, crew including Silent Porter, Braxton Hall, producer Trevor Newhouse, switchers Joel McChesney, our camera operators and color commentator Noah Lance. I'm Anthony Gary saying so long from Spartan Arena. This has been a presentation of Spartan Basketball on Homestead Life. Have a splendid rest of your day.